A heartfelt thank you to our faithful partners and friends who made this Fire in Youth program possible. We appreciate your prayers and support. Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to read verses 5 and 6. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. When as we're continuing in our series, Overcoming, Overcoming Rejection, when we know, I mean really know, that we are accepted by God, that acceptance helps us to combat, to, to come against, in a victorious manner, to come against rejection, to come against the spirit of rejection, with an expectation that we are coming against it in the spirit of God. Therefore, we are overcoming that spirit of rejection. Amen? Now, I have a few questions for us tonight as we continue in our sub-series on trust. How many of us in here are waiting on God to answer prayers? How many of how many of us believe that it's taking a long time to have those prayers answered? How many believe, I mean really believe, how many trust that God has heard your prayers? You really trust that? He's heard them? You really believe them? Do you still feel that way even over the ones that have been taking a long time? What do, you, what do you suppose is delaying God's responses to the prayer? Two things. but <laughs> You claim to yourselves first. That's a good one. Yes. So one, what's the second one? His kairos, his timing. Okay. All right. So do we all trust God? Do you trust God? So we respond to the questions real quick, right? Yes, we trust him. Yes, we really trust him. But why is there this, this delay? God's going to challenge that tonight. All right? So quiet your mind for just a moment and think. Check. Checking with the Holy Spirit. What's your trust level? You don't have to answer it out loud. You can just answer it within yourselves. What is your trust level? What is your God trust level? If you had to, on a scale of 1 to 10, right, with 10 being like this outstanding, amazing trust level in God, I know I trust him. If you had to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, what would be your number? I want you to write your number down. On a scale of 1 to 10, what will your number be? Honestly, knowing that nobody's looking at that except for all of heaven, right? What is that number? Is it possible? Is it possible that you're not trusting God 
fully? Is it possible that you're not trusting God for these prayers that you've prayed and these prayers that are currently being delayed? Is it possible? I think all things are possible, but it's very possible, right? If you had to really think about it, would your thought process switch from, yeah, it's possible, which is everybody's response to, gosh, I I quieted my mind, I checked my trust level, and it's not as high as um, as I thought it was. Or it's not as high as it needs to be because the Holy Spirit just got done telling me um, it's not that high. It's not to say you don't have any trust. But, you know, in maybe in the exuberance of answering the question, later Holy Spirit comes back and says, yeah, let's talk about that trust level, right? Could it be that, and let's go to Psalm 37 and 4, but could it be that you, could it be that you might be struggling with that trust because you don't believe that God is really going to give it to you? Do you have things that you're believing him for and and when you take a closer look at it, you're like, well, I don't know that he he's going to give it to me. I don't know that I have the faith to believe that he's going to give it to me. And I don't believe that I have the faith that he's going to give it to me maybe because I don't believe that I'm worthy. So it's possible, right, that, that you know, you, you, in answering the question at the beginning, yeah, yes, I trust the Lord, and, and yes, you know, uh, I, I trust him even for those unanswered prayers, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I don't because I don't believe that I'm worth it. I don't believe that he's going to give it to me. I don't believe that what I've requested is something that he wants to give me. I don't believe that what I've requested is something that um, that he's going to give me because of the way I've lived my life, the things that I've done. I believe he's forgiven me. I'm just having a hard time forgiving myself. And because I'm having this hard time forgiving myself, I'm just thinking that maybe these prayers, these particular ones, he's not going to answer. But I have good news for you if you're thinking that. And it's this, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The Lord is amazing and wonderful. He's given us repentance, grace, mercy. He's given us, above all, love. He's accepted us into his family when we've confessed Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Right? So, our hearts really, by way of Holy Spirit, right, should be in line and in tune with the heart of God. And if so, then we know that whatever it is that we ask for, God is going to give that to us. Whatever it is that we desire, he's going to give it to us. He's not going to give us the sinful things, evil and wicked things, but he is going to give us the holy and righteous things. He's going to give us the things that are in his will. All right? Can we agree to that? Okay. Well, second, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. So we might have a hard time believing that God can give us something because we have a hard time believing that we're righteous. Does any, has anybody felt that way? I don't feel right enough, righteous enough to receive from God what I would like to receive from him. You don't have to raise your hand. Your face is a, your facial expressions is enough for me. <laughs> but in second, what we have, see, but we have, we have a medicine tablet for that one because the word of God is like medicine for our soul, right? It says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What does that mean? We are ambassador, ambassadors of Christ. We may not always get it right. But instead of beating ourselves up over the times that we don't get it right, 
how about how about we be real quick to um repent and move on from there do you realize that we spend more time regretting where we didn't get it right instead of taking that time to immediately repent for the part that we didn't get right and then quickly and spend more time focused on and meditating on the fact that God has a forgiven me and if God who made me can forgive me then I should be able to forgive myself right and spend time on his forgiveness functioning from a place of grace right and a place of mercy and a place of love because that's going to help us in our walk with him see we have to trust god but we have to be able to take him at his word when he says that he that he delights in us let's take him at his word let's trust him that he, let's trust that god delights in us let's trust that that he delights in us and that he will give us the desires of our heart let's trust that our heart would be will be in line with the heart of God. Therefore, he's going to give us those things. Let's trust his word that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And because of that, he sees us through the lens of Jesus Christ. He sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees us as already being righteous because we are covered in righteous blood. And if we can... If we can trust him and obey, if we can trust him, we're going to obey him. And you're going to hear this several times throughout this teaching. If we trust God, we can obey him. We have a hard time obeying, being obedient to someone that we don't trust, right? When someone shares something with us that doesn't have a good track record, we have trouble believing them, correct? So if they tell us to do something, we're going to maybe squint our eyes a little bit, maybe look out of the corner of our eyes a bit, right? We're, we're, we're going to do something to show this, hmm, can I really trust you? Your track record really with me or with anybody else is really not that good. And so you're going to hesitate in responding to that request, to that counsel, right? You're going to have trouble obeying that counsel, obeying what someone shares with us or with you, right? Because there's something, there's something there that has proven to you time and time again that this could go either way with that individual. But interestingly enough, God has not lied, right? God has not deceived. God's track record is impeccable. His track record is perfect. So if we believe, if we trust that his track record is perfect and impeccable, then can we trust his counsel? Can we trust his word? So if he says that he delights in us, can we trust that? If he says that he will give us the desires of our heart, can we trust that? If he says that we are the righteousness of God, can we trust that? We should be able to because he's got an impeccable, perfect track record. So let me ask another question. On those prayers that have not been answered, have you given up on them already? So you haven't given up on any one of your prayers, not even one. Hmm. <laughs> have you given up on, on any of the prayers being answered? Any of the unanswered prayers, they haven't been answered. And if they haven't been answered up to now, it's probably because they're not going to be answered. Ah, I haven't thought of that one. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes when our prayers are not answered, we figure they're not answered because they're never going to be answered. Um, have you, do you have dreams that you've forgotten about that have been put on hold and maybe thought God's not going to bring that one to pass? See how it shifts? See how we're like, yes, yes. No, maybe not. Definitely not. You see how quick that goes? Yes. No? Wow. Well, since you put it that way, right? It's okay to laugh. You're holding it. <laughs> All right. All right. Joy, 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 joy. All right. Have you given up on the prophetic work, on the fulfillment of some of your prophetic work? Maybe, ah, you haven't given up on all of them? But on some of them. Because it's taking a long time, huh? How about reconciliation? Is there is there a friend, is there a family member that you've been hoping to be reconciled to or or hoping and, and praying that that friend or that uh, loved one would be saved? So either, you know, reconciled to God, right? That's salvation. Reconciled to you, that's not salvation, but that's a product of, right, that relationship. So have you given up on ever being reconciled with or on friendly terms with someone in your life? So you haven't given up on anybody that you know being saved because of what you've seen, <laughs> how you how they've lived their lives? Let's go to Acts 16.31. How they lived their life, how... Um, time and time again, they keep denying the Lord. That hasn't deterred you from believing God for their salvation. Do you have a difficult family member and you're like, oh my gosh, it's always been this way. I don't think it's ever going to be fixed. Oh, I'm really loving this series already. All right, Acts 16.31. I, I feel like there's like a nail, right? And there's the head of the nail, and it's like, boom. <laughs> okay, let's try. Boom, right on there again. All right, Acts 16, 31. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. What am I doing here? Am I not debunking some lies and some mindsets? What am I doing? if not building that foundation of trust in God. This is not to focus on, on um, you know, him not bringing these promises and prophetic words to pass, but this is to encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not to your own understanding and in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's what this is about. Trust, trusting in God is going to take us really, really far, very far. Trusting in God will bring those prophetic words, those dreams, those visions, and those prayers to pass. Yes, there is an appointed time in God. Yes, there is. But it will also set up, uh, build such a strong foundation that even if we're not seeing it take place, or here's a good one. Right? You're looking all around you, and the very thing that God said is going to take place, what you're seeing is the direct opposite. Have you ever seen that happen? Right? Has that been a discouragement to you? Right? And you have to like hold on to believe and re to remember and believe God said. Right? So what we're doing here tonight is we're we're coming into the realization of some lies that we've believed. And now we're combating the lie with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians 6, 17. We don't have to go there, but what we're doing is we're combating it with the sword of the spirit. We're coming back and we're saying, no, he delights in me. 
No, he's going to give me the desires of my heart. No, I am the righteousness of God. Right? No, me and my household will be saved. Have you given up on your business growing, your ministry growing, your church growing, or going to the next level? Have you given up on your job? Meaning, you know, do you feel like you're stuck on your job and you're just, you're not growing and you're not going in that direction or it's not going in the direction that you were hoping to see it go in or that you would like to see it go in? All right. Is that another, is that another area that maybe you've given up on? Seeing that growth, experiencing that growth. Have you given up on God and saying, maybe you haven't voiced it. Come on now. We can say things without voicing them. And we can tell the Lord all day long how much we don't trust him and not even and not even have spoken a word. All right? Our actions will say it all. Those secret little thoughts will say it all. Have you given up on getting out of debt? Getting a new car. Maybe God promised you a new car. And maybe you have not believed him for it, although you say you believe him for any one of these things. Maybe you're saying, I believe him for all of this. But let me ask you this. If you believe, if you trust him, has your step matched your trust level that you're perfecting? Uh, maybe he's promised you a new position or promotion. Maybe you've given up on that prom promotion or that position. Maybe you've given up even on your own spiritual growth. Gosh, I'm never going to get this right. Have you said that? Gosh, this is really hard. Have you given up on that? Have you given up on doing better? Have you given up on the fact that maybe things are going to get better, that maybe you're going to get married, mar your marriage will be uh restored that you will have children right that your spouse will serve the lord <laughs> how about overcoming a struggle you're struggling you're battling with something and you've been struggling and battling with this thing so long that you've given up on god ever freeing you from that healing you from that saving you from that delivering you from that has that happened to anybody in here <laughs> okay all right maybe god's promised you a condo a department an office building maybe he's promised to heal you maybe you're struggling with some sort of health issue has he not healed you already from your previous health struggles, and will he not do it again? If you take a look at what God has done in your life, would you agree with this statement? His track record in your life is perfect and impeccable. If you just look at what he's done in your life, so why would he stop now? <laughs> Yes, I see. It's hitting right here. <laughs> did you did you stop trusting God in any of these areas? In any one of these situations that I've listed? The list, of course, is not an exhaustive list. It's not a complete list, but it kind of just gives us an idea. And it's really just to get our thought processes going in the direction of trust. How much do I really trust the Lord? Do I trust the Lord? How much do I really trust him? Hmm. Could it be that you stopped trusting in God? Could it be that you never really trusted God? Ouch. Did you maybe stop trusting him or never trusted in him because you were afraid and you were afraid that he, not only were you afraid, but you were afraid that he would reject you because others have rejected you? And could it be that you're looking at God 
from a position of rejection and say, well, I've been rejected by everyone else. Why would God be any different? But maybe we're not voicing it quite that way, but maybe the things that we're thinking and the things that we're doing or not doing um, are actually communicating those words really, really loud. Are we looking at God as Father and saying, my Father in the natural has disappointed me. Therefore, I have trouble with my relationship with you because you're Father. I'm having trouble seeing you as Father. I'm having trouble trusting you as Father because my natural Father has disappointed me. Could it be? Are you afraid? See, here's the thing. God is Father, but He's like He is unlike any Father on the face of this earth. He loves you. He loves you strong. He loves you perfectly. He loves you unconditionally. So when you go to the Father in prayer, He's not going to reject you, is He? Ooh, some hesitation there. Do you believe that God, seriously, do you believe that God will reject you? He won't. God never rejects anyone that comes to him. If we take a look at the lives of the Israelites, every time they rejected God and repented and went back, God forgave them. It's not a license to reject God, repent, so that you can go back. But what I'm saying is, if that happens, he will forgive. And God, God will forgive us each and every time we go to him with a true repentant heart. He will not deny us. He will not reject us. And he will not turn us away. Now, if we're living a, an extremely sinful life, yes, it will delay the promises of God. Yes, our, our prayers will not be heard. Not because he wants to reject, but because the level of sin in the life is such that he can't move past the sin. So the sin must be dealt with. Once the sin is dealt with, what repentance does is two things. It tells him, I am turning away from this completely, and it removes the obstacle to our prayers. Here's another one. Maybe you're afraid to trust him because maybe it wasn't your father, but maybe it was somebody else. Mother, brother, sister, friend, co-worker, employer. Who disappointed you? Or whose? Not th that word doesn't exist in the plural form. like. But who are the people that disappointed you to the point that you've lost trust in God. See, sometimes we select certain relationships that weren't meant for us to select, but we wanted them anyway. And we wanted them so bad that we got involved in these relationships. And then, because they were really never meant to be, the relationship ended. Whatever kind of relationship it might be, it ended. And the ending of that relationship caused disappointment. Some relationships will end because other people just end them prematurely. But in either case, what I'm saying is, could it be that you're not trusting God because somebody else disappointed you, but not taking a look at the fact that maybe I was disappointed because I wasn't supposed to be there anyway. I wasn't supposed to be with that individual anyway. And I set the will of God aside and went, went with my will. My will didn't work out. The will of God, God prevailed. And now I'm having trouble with God because his will prevailed in my life. Then what happens? The beauty of it all is when the will of God prevails and we see that the will of God has prevailed, we can go back and say, thank you for delivering me from that and saving me from that. But we can trust him.
We hope you have enjoyed the Fire in You program. Please feel free to share this empowering message with family and friends and visit us at our webpage at www.seedofnationsinternationalcenter.org. That's www.seedofnationsinternationalcenter.org. And please feel free to share your prayer request, testimony, or partner with us through your tax-deductible giving. Your donation will help us continue delivering inspiring messages to nations. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. To receive alerts of future Fire New programs, just press the notification button. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For additional articles, please visit and subscribe to our blog at sunpropheticvoice.wordpress.com That's sunpropheticvoice.wordpress.com Until next time, remember, the fire is in you.